Good evening. You're watching the Digital Age, and I'm James Goodale. Bob Carey, you remember Bob Carey, said when he went to Washington, D.C. for the first time, the first thing he learned was the FBI never talked to the CIA. Now we're in the digital age. Will the FBI talk to the CIA on its computers? Now we have a 9-11 report. And today we have one of the officers of that report, Bob Carey. Thank you very much for coming in, Bob. You're welcome. I want to call you President Carey because you're now president <laughs> yeah. of the new school. Of course, I would like to call you Senator Carey, but it's too difficult, so I'll have to call you Bob. Yeah, yeah Bob works. Bob works. Uh, one of the interesting parts of the 9-11 experience for us in the audience was when you went on, uh, it was interesting for me anyway, and when you went on television and talked about Masui, and uh, you said all the FBI had to do was to put Masui on the interlink. And I said, my God, what's that all about? Now, why don't we fresh our recollection as to who Masui is? Well, Masui was uh, the individual that was picked up in Minneapolis by Minneapolis FBI office. And uh, uh, as it turns out, he had inside of his, his hard drive uh, uh, information uh, about the plot. I mean, he was uh, training in a flight school in, uh, near Minneapolis and uh, suspected of being one of, the, one of the plotters. But at the very least, uh, what you have is, uh, is a radical Islamist with connections to al-Qaeda, training at a flight school in, in Minneapolis, uh, talking about uh, planes being used as a, as a, as a bomb uh, several weeks before the, the attack on the World Trade Center. And that information doesn't make it uh, to uh, Washington, D.C. As a consequence, the airports weren't secure. The cockpits were hardened. No security measures were taken. By the way, security measures that were taken on previous occasions when uh, there was a su suspicion that some attack might be made using our airport. So, uh, no action was taken as a consequence of that information. It simply didn't make it to Washington. It was, you know, it was sent through the mail. Was basically. it sent? Through, was it really I, sent? My through guess the mail? is it was sent through the mail. I mean, I don't, the, the stuff was on the hard drive. Did they ever get the stuff out of the hard drive? Yeah, they did get the stuff out of the hard, hard drive. drive. But it never, never made its way to Washington. I mean, it, but even just the fact, for, forget I me, mean, there was a lot to, uh, made of uh, the, the hard drive because of the federal law regarding uh, yeah, uh, right. you know, getting in the FISA warrant that was not, not, not granted. But if they just had the fact that you have a radical Islamist training to learn how to fly an airplane, uh, indicating the possibility that a plane might be used as a bomb uh, weeks before the World Trade Center disaster, uh, it would have been plenty of time to respond and take action. And maybe it wouldn't have prevented all 19. Um, but my guess is it would have prevented some of the, the hijackers, at right. the very least, from getting out of the plane. Okay. So um, that Masui incident was probably the most publicized of uh, many incidents where there was information that didn't uh, get distributed. Now, what interested me about your comment, because this is the digital age, that's what this program is, and we live in the digital age, is your comment that this information didn't get on, you use the word interlink. What, well, what it, is interlink? Well, interlink is a, is a secure communication system. It's, you know, it's, it's basically uh, a network that allows individuals to get access to secure information. So you place, if you're in Minneapolis, you'd put that, uh, this information onto interlink, and people who are following uh, uh, you know, national security issues and, and, and with, with uh, the code to get into that intel link would be able to get that information immediately. And, and I think they would have. That would have been a, not just a, a dot. That's not just a dot. You know, that's a flashing light, that, that a very specific piece of information. And as I said, I think if, if, especially if it got into intel link and the CIA gets it, because Tenet was at high alert. If it had gotten to Tenet, I think, in a timely fashion, I think there's a reasonable chance that that, that, that that Condoleezza Rice and others in the White House might have rallied and done more than they actually right. ended up doing. Let's just go back a little bit on um, the mechanics of this because mm -hmm. uh, we're, I don't. Do you spend all day looking at a screen? I wonder, people our age, do we? I mean, I sit there like this all day long. Is that well, your experience? Uh, well, now? I mean, it's it, yes. I mean, it's I don't no. sit all day looking. But at you're the there. Screen. Yes, yeah. it's it's. So that's I'm part using, of our life. Well, it's it's. You know, I, I, I just recruited a dean from China to come over and, and be a part of the New School to run our graduate uh, studies program. 
and the final negotiations with him took place on the net. Really? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm typing You're in. You're typing him and he's coming back to you? He, he's coming yeah. back to me. He's over in Beijing. He'd yeah. just gone for a walk around the Forbidden City and he's yeah. listening to Shostakovich and he'd gone on the web and read a couple of Chinese websites to try to figure out right. what's going on. I mean, you remember the situation where, just to, to segue into something and begin on national security, yeah. the situation where uh, there was a U.S. Uh, intelligence plane that was forced down in China. Yeah, beginning early, of the Bush administration. Beginning yeah. in the Bush right. administration. In the old days, you would wait with bated breath to hear what, what Secretary Powell was going to say about what was going on. In this age, all you have to do is go to a couple of Chinese websites and you find out actually what's yeah. going on. You don't need to wait. So increasingly, what you have is the opportunity to find out what's going on. Now, there's reliability issues and so forth, but God knows we have enough reliability problems with our own government, so right. waiting for our, the government to tell us what's going on is not necessarily a good way to get highly reliable information either. So the net provides us with a very rapid way of communicating right. in, in, in an age where the enemy is apt not to be some ninja special forces right. Delta Force individual, but a student in Hamburg, Germany, right. Mohammed Atta. In the, the most chilling part of the 9-11 thing for me, Mohammed Atta, the man that was in charge of the, of the, of the people who, had, who hijacked these planes, went on the internet in Hamburg, Germany, and shopped for the best prices for flight schools in the United States of America. And we did a program yeah. on Mohammed Atta. We stole it from Hedrick Smith, who's the well-known Pulitzer Prize winner. We mm -hmm. took his program and had him here to persuade him of what you just said and chopped it up in the first part was a uh, segment where they photographed Otta's apartment. And the first thing Otta did when he went in and rented the apartment was put in high speed. Oh, sure. But this was 1990, 1999, before I had high speed. But he had it. So, well, the terrorists are really up to speed. And we're going back to our friends, the FBI. We'll get the CIA in a minute. But our friends, the FBI uh, in Minneapolis, all they had to do was put it on Interlink. Now, let's picture the recipients of this. I said, you and I are looking at the computer. Mm -hmm. Well, theoretically, um, FBI people are looking at computers, too. And uh, they would plug in if they are on Interlink. And I think the way Interlink works is, if I understand it, it's a secret system. Mm -hmm. So you have a secret computer. So if you're in the CIA, and I'm sure this is so at the FBI, too, you actually have two computers. One is for unclassified. One is for classified. Actually, in the CIA, I have three, but that's a different, mm -hmm. different story. Uh, so the FBI, theoretically, would be plugging away, and that information would be made uh, available to them. So I want to ask a question. So why didn't that agent out in, Min in Minneapolis put, that inf put Masui on Interlink so that the guy back at headquarters, when he's searching, would, would pick it up? Why didn't she do that? Well, I think the, uh, part of she, I think. Yeah, actually. I, I don't mean, mean part, sexist about it. I mean, part of the reason is that that during the summer of high alert, from the from the top level of the government, there wasn't a call put out and said, "We we've got to we got to organize this thing because we believe Al Qaeda is in the United States." I mean, that's the beginning point. Right. I mean, Al Qaeda uh, um, we regard it as a threat overseas, with 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 substantial amounts of evidence that they intended to attack in the United States. So it's not just CIA and FBI. It's, it's information that INS had. It's information right. that, that uh, our, our consular offices had. I mean, a, a large number of these 19, I think the number was, we, we estimate 15 out of 19, had forged documents to get in. Yeah. Uh, and we had no effort in place to try to determine which one of these documents right. might be Al-Qaeda documents, et cetera. So, I mean, I, my answer is you would have, it would have taken right from the top, from the president, saying, okay, we've got to organize ourselves. You know, you, you tell me that Al-Qaeda's come to the United States of America. Let's figure out where their vulnerabilities are. Let's go to alert. Let's tell the American people who bin Laden is. Let's tell them who Al-Qaeda is. We waited until after 9-11 to deliver that information. And you had a series of attacks right. by bin Laden and Al-Qaeda against the United States, dating all the way back to 1992. So it, it, it seems to me that, that, that unless the person at the top is managing this thing, you're going to have a problem. I don't care how you rearrange the boxes, what Congress does. Right. If you don't manage this thing at the top by saying, here's what I want to get done, it's going to be exceptionally difficult for it to get done. Well, do you, uh, I don't know. We're just supposed to be neutral on all of this, so I don't know if I should ask you this question. Yeah. But I've always wanted to, I've always w wanted to know whether 
the top members of the administ present administration, I'll leave the names out, are they on the net all the time? I mean, do they have the proper mindset? And you can think about that answer because the follow-up question would be, well, if you're managing this effort, wouldn't you say, hey, let's make sure our, it's the digital age, our d databases are accessible and talking to each other? What do you think of well, that? I, yeah, I think you would. Um, and, and, and actually, the, 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 uh, for me, the best way to illustrate this, and, 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 and I'll say neutral because we, as a commission, yeah. we've, we've, we've agreed that we're not going to criticize either of the presidential candidates on the basis of terrorism and things that we look for right. from the 9-11 report. Very famous briefing on August 6th, uh, 2001, yeah. the August 6th the presidential, Rice. the presidential yeah. daily briefing in Crawford, right. Texas. Uh, the big battle over it, it ended up being declassified in the hearing when we had Dr. Rice uh, before us. Uh, and if you look at that uh, document, you know, it looks like this. It's a couple pages yeah. long, and it's, it's, it's all text-based. It's all yeah. typed in there. Uh, and it doesn't tell the story nearly as well as a, a journalist could tell the story if you had them write it. You know, the, the, president's, the president needs, as, as all, everybody does in the information, uh, you, you have to look at that person and say, he needs to get the information away so he can understand it. Yeah. And by that I mean, in, in the information age, that additional piece of information sometimes is a negative, not a positive. What you need is somebody who can sort out the stuff that's irrelevant from the stuff that's relevant. In this case, what's relevant is, headline, Bin Laden intends to attack inside the United States. Okay, what the president needs to know is a lot more than besides that. He needs to know, what are the efforts in place? He said there was 70 FBI investigations open. What does that mean? Uh, what's going on besides that? So part of the problem, in my view, is that the presentations to the the number one customer, the commander in chief, are being made in the old way. Old text based reports that are being slid to the, in the president's inbox as opposed to, you know, calculated effort to try to understand how do we make this presentation so the president can understand it. Well, do you think that the information base, which is used by the person giving the information to the president, which he has to manage, and allowing for a moment that there could have been better management of the information he had, but do you think the information base is really up to the standards that you and I are familiar with? No. Uh, no. Not at all? No. I mean, the, we still have interoperable uh, computer systems yeah, that are not to. interoperable. We still have first responders that aren't trained like they, uh, they ought, uh, as they right. ought to be. We still don't get the intelligence driven down to the person at the border. I'm not so sure it isn't easier to get in the United States to the forged document than it was prior to 9-11. Right. I mean, you can reorganize all these different 22 different federal agencies in the Department of Homeland Security, but we found billions of dollars short right now in training. You've got to teach people. Uh, how to use these new technology. You can't just hire, you know, another thousand people to come in and work. They have to be trained to understand what it is that they're supposed to do and be able to do it. And that training simply isn't, isn't going on. And on the law enforcement front, training oftentimes the first thing to go. At the, at the local level, it's exceptionally difficult. So I'd say computer and interoperability is an enormous issue. But I put right at the top of my list, frankly. I, Jim, I, I, I would too. I have to say I loved your report. Yeah. Anyone Anyone who reads the 9-11 report has to say it's an absolutely extraordinary effort. Build a consensus, but also extraordinary writing effort. I mean, it really reads well. Everyone should go out and, and read it, and it's uh, great fun. I, however, have one uh, criticism of it, which is I don't think what you just said is there. I have fire writing it just from what I, what I know, and I'm just an informed citizen who's done this program mm -hmm and I'm sort of into it a little bit. I would have put the number one, based on, probably I don't know enough, but I'm, number one recommendation, inoperability of our systems, and we're not competitive with the outside. Well, number I, one problem. Why well, didn't I, I get, why it, didn't actually, I get in Actually, it there? is there. I mean, one of the problems. Well, down, but down well, the No, one of the problems <laughs> that, that, that I think that, we've, that, the, that the report suffers is yeah. so much attention's been given to the recommendations dealing with the organization of the government with the Congress uh, right. yesterday enacting right. all the changes having to do with the executive branch and right. none of the changes having to do with the legislative. Uh, they're quite eager to reform the executive branch and a little bit reluctant to reform themselves. And almost no attention pa paid to the narrative inside of which are a lot of uh, cautionary observations about 
computer interoperability, right. excessive secrecy. The yeah. FBI holding on for right. the purpose of evidence, the CIA uh, holding on uh, for purpose of sources. The whole bin Laden story was a top secret. It was a top secret until after 9-11. After everybody knew about it. And had we known about it, had it been published in 96 or 97 or 98, I think the outcome would have been substantially different because people said, okay, now I understand. I've got a radical Islamic army led by a guy by the name of bin Laden. He attacked us in 92. He maybe knocked down our Black Hawks in 93 in October in Mogadishu. Uh, he, he was at least boasting that he was proud of the attack on Kobar Towers in 1996. And you begin to see this is a serial set of attacks. Then he hits the East African Embassy. Then he hits the coal. And, and coal is a great example because we treated the coal as a one-off incident rather than the latest in a series of attacks. I think the American people would have been in a much different frame of mind. Our law enforcement and emergency response people would have been if we hadn't kept it secret. So. And I, I, I put actually very top of my list this excessive uh, uh, amount of classification on the CIA side holding those sources and the FBI side holding the case in order to prosecute. And as a consequence, they, they appear not to be talking to each other, but they talk to each other, but they're talking to each other about the wrong stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Kuala Lumpur uh, is set out in this report and it's a, a famous incident can you just tell us about it why it became so famous when people now say Kuala Lumpur and everyone's supposed to know what it means what does it well, mean? Well Kuala Lumpur is where they met to, to, to finalize the plot um, and that's basically where they where they put the final details of the plot together and there were people who were involved in previous attacks on the United States who were at the meeting and, and then we knew uh, and we knew we were there yeah, we knew we were there. They knew who they were. We, again, that it had been a serial set of attacks. We knew at that point that they, that they wanted to attack inside the United States. We had already had the millennium threat. We had already had uh, uh, you know, an effort on the Los Angeles airport. We already had an announcement of an attack against uh, New York City again after 1993. In fact, we had, we had one successful physical attack in 1993 by the nephew of the guy that was organizing the, the effort in Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> so, yeah. But when I read the report, I was so, so amazed as to how much we knew. I mean, we knew they were there. Um, mm. I guess we didn't know they were plotting 9-11, needless to say, but we knew we were, they were there and we took photographs of them. We, and, well, isn't well, that right? We, yes, we, we, we didn't. We didn't that, that's always, the, that's always the, sort of the line. If I'd only known that 19 uh, radical Islamists would hijack four American planes on the morning of the 11th September uh, 2001 and fly two of them into the World Trade Center, one into the Pentagon and a fourth into an unknown de de If I'd only known I'd have moved heaven and earth. That's the line. I said, wait a minute, I don't need to know the exact details. You knew these guys had attacked us before. You knew they wanted us to attack, attack us again. They're meeting, for God's sakes. Uh, and, and not only were they meeting, but the meeting was uh, reported to a tenant. It's according to no, no, today we, today, so the CIA knew that they were meeting, and they were meeting to do 9-11. I mean, I mean the, that the, seems the, to me amazing. The, the, I mean, the sad conclusion is, in, until they attacked us on our own soil, it, when they attacked our embassies in East Africa, when they attacked the coal, when they attacked Kobar, when they attacked us in Mogadishu, it's over there. It's not. It's 50 or so people. It's not that big a deal. It wasn't until they attacked us in the United States that we began preemptively to say, "You got a meeting where you're going to be talking about attacking the United States, and you already have. You're not going to have that meeting." Uh, we're not going to watch you and observe you and put it in the file and, and so forth. We're going to move aggressively against you. We'll arrest you. We'll kill you. We'll do whatever we have to do because we believe that you're going to carry out some deadly attack against us and we aren't going to allow it. Until 9-11, it was all over there and it wasn't as serious as it became uh, regrettably and tragically after they attacked well, us. Well, I'm interested to hear you say, let's put it in the file because we've been picking on the FBI not talking to the CIA. Well, now here's an example of perhaps the CIA not talking to the FBI because the photographs uh, were, uh, were put in the file, I, I guess, mm -hmm. the best I can conclude manually. And there was um, information about the meeting put in the file. Mm -hmm. uh, the file also had a uh, report from the NSA because the NSA that's the National Security Agency, which listens in on phone calls, had got a phone call of one of the people going to the meeting. And they put that on Indolet. Yeah. 
And uh, that was in the file. But guess what? That file, which had in it photographs, uh, notes of the meeting, um, the file, the uh, NSA, it had subsequent travel plans of those who were at the meeting. That file's building up at the CIA. They don't put any of that on. Uh, mm -hmm. No, it's it's. They don't put any of it on on Interlink. It's it, we we continue to operate in the paper world. Yes, we use the networks. Yes, we had computers. Yes, we had all the trappings, but we were still operating in a world where you stuck it in a file. One of the one of the uh, moments uh, to to me that illustrated how far we've got to go to catch up with with the existing technology is, we interviewed uh, former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich. He brought with him a map of the world. And what it showed is that Al Qaeda is in 60 countries. And you look at it and say, oh my God, now I understand the dimension of the problem. This is a big problem. He said, uh, Newt, where'd you get this uh, map? Because uh, I'm looking, I don't see any name on it. He said, well, I've got a friend over at CIA that produced it. He said, this is terrific. You think the president's got it? No, I don't think they gave it to him. <laughs> uh, they're, they're not producing, they're not using the technology to produce these visual documents that allow the president and others to understand what's going on. And, and, and as I, but to, to say again for, 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 for emphasis, I believe very strongly that had they not kept secret who Osama bin Laden was and what he's done, if they continued to tell his story repeatedly from the moment he w hit one of his right. people walked in in 1996, this guy Khalid that walked in to, to in, in 1996 to one of the CIA stations, we brought him in, in 2001 into New York City to be the principal witness against East Africans and embassy bombings. He was that reliable a source, but it was kept secret. I mean, you'd have been better off briefing the President of the United States using court documents of 2001. They were a lot more, it was a lot more clear in the court who, who Osama bin Laden was and who Al Qaeda was than it was in the reports that were being delivered to the President by the CIA. Well, we all know about the secrecy culture because you and I grew up in it in the paper world. Yeah. But now we have, we talk to each other, but this is rare. Person to person is probably going to be talking to each other on uh, by email okay now what do we do with the secrecy culture that becomes transformed to the person who's keeping quotes the file the files on the computer and he puts on the file secret which means that if I'm sitting at the FBI and I access the CIA's computer I can't get it what do we do about that isn't the secrecy culture oh, yeah. even worse even worse in the information age than it was in the talking age because there's so many, it's so, it's so easy to keep stuff secret. Well, it's it's it, it, it's worse in one way, but the <coughs> problem is, you know, it just means the government's going to become more and more isolated from the real world. I mean, you know, they keep all this stuff secret about the assessment of the Soviet Union right up to the collapse of the Soviet Union. You know, uh, anybody that had traveled the Soviet Union, uh, anybody that had traveled to to Eastern Europe would come back and said, "Wait a minute, you guys are telling the president." That the, that the economy of, the, of East Germany is on a par with the economy of West Germany. I was just over there. They're using ox carts over there. You know, they're back in the feudal age. You can't tell me that the economy is comparable. You're using data that's not, that's not based upon any objective evaluation of what's going on in the world. And you classify it, and you get a bunch of guys, and you're talking to each other, to each other and you don't have anybody checking your work. You know, it's like kids that are doing mathematics and if they get the decimal point off three points and nobody's checking the work, it sort of becomes relevant as they're, as they're doing additional calculations. So part of the problem with the secrecy culture is that it, it oftentimes prevents you from pulling up the shades and looking out the window. Okay. Hey, it's raining out there. You know, the report says it's, it's uh, sunshiny and bright. How are we going to change it? You got to manage it. You cannot. Really? You got to. You, you have to manage it. You have to engage the private sector. You have to. In my view, when it comes to, for example, computer interoperability, one of the problems is the private sector is writing the specs. We've got to say to the private sector, "Here's what we need," and then let you competitively bid on it. Because if they write the specs, it's a never-ending game. Well, let's just because they want to keep contracts coming. <laughs> all, you know, they, they got share owners to take care of. <laughs> so. Uh, Basically, you're saying that uh, we've got to get the private sector involved in a, in, a, in, a, in a meaningful way. I've always wondered, 
Did you ever ask the question of uh, anyone, do you have something like Google at the CIA? Oh, they have Google at the CIA. They have Google? Yeah. I mean, they've no, but I mean, they've got no. They've got Google, like you and I have Google. Or they have a search engine. No, they have a search engine yeah. equal to Google. No, nobody's no, got no, a search. Well, that, no, 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 equal, equal. No, to Google. I mean, but they'll use Google. I mean, the CIA is the CIA is struggling to come into the information age. It's it's hard for a government agency, especially one that's got a classified mission like they do. So I'm very sympathetic to the difficulty, and they're very much aware. As, as well of, the, of this challenge, and they're, they're, they're working. But it, it's not just the CIA. I mean, you really see change happening, I think, in a most exciting way, away from the CIA and the rest of the community. Among the, the agencies that I find to be really trying to figure out how to take advantage of current techno technologies are the, the National Geospatial Agency. It used to be, you know, 10 years ago they were maps. We stood up a thing called National Imaging and Mapping, and now it's NGA. And they are out there trying to figure out how to make it work. National Security Agency is as well. In the community writ large, there are a lot of exciting uh, efforts going on. They really are struggling. But it, bottom line, it gets back to the, the, the same thing. Right. Do you have a guy that's going to manage the All right, thing? now, if we have a reorganization, yeah. will that guy who's now the czar, what's, his, what do you, what's the National Intelligence Director? Will he be able to manage it, and will he or she be able to change the culture? Not unless they're a manager. If you hire somebody who's a political hack, uh, who helps you in your campaign, who looks good on television, and ties his tie right and stuff like that, and has all the sound bites, and can answer everything in 26 seconds, and go on the talk shows and look real good, that doesn't mean they're a manager. You know, you, right. you know so if they hire a manager, hire somebody who right. can manage, that person is going to be able to manage, and then you got to let them manage. Right. Uh, so there's, there's, there's two things that a president's right. got to do. We have 26 seconds left. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so i got to ask you, will yeah. the FBI ever talk to CIA and vice versa, yes or no? Yes. Good. Thank yeah. you for going by, Bob <laughs> Terry. <laughs> and thank you for stopping by and come back next week and learn more about the digital age. For the digital age, I am... James Goodale, good night.